You know what I just realized too? Was it, what was his name? What did he say his name? Uh, what did Sosuke say this guy's name was? Raiten Many Memo? So, like, wouldn't that mean that it's his pen? So wouldn't that mean that he's the guy? Like, this one seems like it's going by way faster than the first one. Like, this, like, look how simple this one is. It's like, oh, it's probably this guy because he also has these initials. Watch it be someone else, though. But I don't think there's really anyone else involved other than, like, though, like, Inspector Hosonaga, Soseki, and this random dude, the photographer guy. I'm so sorry, Susato. I should have told you about the toxin. You have a strong sense of responsibility, I know. That's why you decided to shoulder the burden alone. No, that's not it at all. I... I was just... I was scared of my failure coming to light, that's all. So I hope to retrieve the substance from the English woman before anyone found out. Before the trial started, do you remember what you said, Susato? That you had no doubt in your mind about my innocence? That you'd stand by me to the last? I remember. And yet, I... I didn't deserve your trust in me. I hid important details from you, Susato. I completely betrayed your faith in me. Hit me, Susato! I deserve it! No, in fact, throw me to the floor! No, that's too good for me as well! Drag me through the city streets! I'm no better, you know. Oh. Even though in my heart I knew you'd pull the knife blade from Miss Brett's back, there was just a brief moment when, in my mind, I doubted you. Susato? I'm sorry. After I stood here and I promised you that I'd stand by you and always be, be on your side, I betrayed your faith in me too. And as such, I failed you as a lawyer. Oh no. I think this situation has taught both of you a valuable lesson. Placing your unbridled faith in another is no easy task. Yes, father. That fact has certainly struck home. Which is why I can see more clearly now. So, Ray, Yes? Can you find it in your heart to forgive me? Oh, Susato. You know, you'll always be a gallant, dashing lawyer in my eyes now. I was so scared, you know, when it happened. I didn't know what was going on. The English woman was sitting in the b at the back of the hut, listening to what I was saying. I know it was you who stole the poison. Well now, whatever do you mean? And then, a moment later, she suddenly got to her feet before collapsing on the floor in front of me with a knife in her back. It all happened right before my eyes. And you were the only people in the hut at the time? That's right, just Miss Brett and myself. There was no one else. So I just don't understand how she could possibly have been stabbed like that. Hmm, a great mystery indeed. I still can't believe it happened. That's why I just couldn't bring myself to speak up. It will be alright. However it happened, and whatever really went on by the sea that day, I promise you that I'm going to prove everything you said you saw was is true. Spoken like a true Miko Tova. Now, I think we should discuss what's coming up in the trial, don't you? We don't have much time. We must make sure we have our facts in order. Yes, I expect the poison is going to come under close scrutiny in the upcoming proceedings. The police should hopefully have identified it on the blade by now. The trouble is, it's a completely new laboratory synthesized blend of alkaloids. The police won't have any way of testing for it. Oh, I see. Yes, without this chemical reagent, it's impossible to, to detect the toxin. Chemical reagent? 
I sent a colleague of mine off with some earlier to deliver to the police headquarters. I think perhaps you should have some as well though, just in case. What's the matter, Susato? You're suddenly very quiet. In this, it's this newspaper article. Exclusive, deadly poison stolen from Yume Medical Research Laboratory. I'm wondering how the information got out, given that it was a government secret. It was all the English woman's doing. What? It was when the professor and Soseki were being interviewed at the laboratory, that so-called English lady swanned in and without any compunction said to Professor Mikotoba, Oh, Professor, surely your guests would love to hear about your work at that on that substance there. It put me in a very awkward position, to be frank. But Soseki's curiosity also had been piqued, and so I had little choice but to give him a, cur a cursory introduction. So then Soseki knew about the poison? Yes, and it's highly likely that the reporter who was writing up the story about us would have caught a glimpse of the toxin too. This many memo son. Oh, by the way, did that reporter join you all when you went to the beach? Oh, no, I don't remember the reporter being there. Indeed, he shouldn't have been. I very much doubt anyone would have wanted him there. Oh, a known criminal had been given permission by the authorities to bathe by the seaside. Sosuke pointed out that inviting a reporter might be problematic, so the man was sent back to his office. Yet he obviously didn't go back, he secretly followed the party to the beach and took this very candid photograph. And then presumably he posted it, anonymously, to the police. Oh. Yes, that must be what happened. Council, we've just heard that the new witness is now ready to testify. The trial is about to resume. Please proceed into the courtroom at once. It's time to steal ourselves once again, then. Defense Attorney Ryu Taro Naruhodo. Yes? Ray has put her faith in me now and told me everything, so I can't let her down. I have to prove that what she's telling the court is true. I have to prove what really happened that day. I hereby call this court to order as we reconvene to continue the trial of Ray Membami. Prosecutor Auchi, have you summoned the new witness? Before I address that question, Your Excellency, I have some very important news to share. Oh? What news? And why does he look so happy about it? During the recess, with the collaboration of Professor Mikotoba's laboratory at Yume University, the police re-examined the knife that was used to end Miss Giselle Brett's life. Oh, I thought he was going to continue. Okay, excellent. I admire your rapid handling of the matter. Oh, too kind, Your Excellency. Too kind. I was merely carrying out your instructions, of course. I had the reagent delivered to the police headquarters by Rickshaw, so it would be there in good time. But judging by the man's swagger, I fear we might need to brace ourselves for the inevitable. And, counsel, what were the results? This dagger, which was so cruelly used to end the life of the victim, has no trace of poison anywhere alongside its blade. What? What? Are you sure? I would stake the reputation of the police on it. Armed with the reagent, the test is extremely simple. They couldn't have made a mistake. So, I'm just wondering though how the fucking pen... Like it's... Oh, okay, but he got... Well, maybe... Well, how did she have... <laughs> she got stabbed in the back, but then how the fuck does the pen... Like, how did she... Where did she grab the pen from? Like... 
Oh, whatever. <laughs> In short, the accused feeble excuse earlier has been utterly destroyed. Now, the prosecution is ready to call the new witness. Ah, the newspaper reporter who managed to capture a photograph of the crucial moment. Good. Very well, officer. Bring in the witness. No trace of poison on the knife. But if that's really the case... How could the toxin have entered the victim's body? Maybe? Well, I guess there's no... There's, there, we checked the point, the tip of the pen. There's no... There's no blood on the tip of the pen, so... Witness, please state your name and occupation for the court. Right then, many memo of the show you news. I'm what people like to call a journal. What's a journal, father? Do you know? It's simply a contraction of journalist. I'm there where the news breaks, putting pen to paper to catch those scoops so they're in print next morning. They don't call me the hero of, of the Herald for nothing. The nice guy of news. Oh, so uh, it was you who took this photograph, was it? Well, well, what have we here? I'm, I'm sorry? Oh, brace yourselves, people. Many memo sent us a scoop in the offing. Female student up to foul play, defended by curiously handsome young lawyer in Supreme Court. The readers will lap this up. We'll set it above the fold at 72 point in a, in a five leg format for the morning edition. Huh? Right then, let's start with your name. Oh, um, uh, it's Ryutaro Naruhodo. Next, what made you want to become a lawyer? Uh, well... I wanted to reform our country's legal system, I suppose. Ryutaro has suddenly become very ambitious, I see. I just borrowed Kazuma's dream for a while. Now, by the way, my name is Taketsuchi Aochi. That's Taketsuchi Aochi. The so-called dark horse of the Supreme Court. My objections strike fear into every defense lawyer's heart. Nah, the readers won't buy that. What? Witness. Um, yes. What is what this court demands to know is whether or not you were responsible for taking this uh, the taking of this picture. It was delivered anonymously to the Imperial Police Bureau only yesterday. Yeah, I wouldn't be a journal if I didn't click quick when presented with a scoop like that now, would I? Sometimes story call stories call out to me. Sometimes I have to chase them down, but either way, you've got to be fast. Fast legs to run with and a fast hand to write with. It's no good if you don't note it down, I always say. That's what I call my m many memoism. Many memoism? Ah, yes, I remember your face. We met that day when you were interviewing myself in Soseki. Yes, right. That was me. Many memo again. But you were supposed to be going back to the show you new uh, news offices after our meeting. But the scoop is, I didn't, because that English woman's words had piqued my journalistic interest. Miss Brett's words? A criminal left to do as she pleases just because she happens to be a British citizen? It's horse dung. This country's judiciary is rotten to the core. The Supreme Court's rulings aren't worth the paper they're written on. The police are just imperial pawns. Stay your tongue, young man. There are complex political issues at play. Huh. Well, anyway, I quickly jotted down those words she said in my many memo memo pad. Are you ready? I'll read it out. It's all here, right? Here goes. I should like to go with everyone to see your country's coast. A serious criminal going to some junket? The people need to know about this. That's why I decided to sneak after them. To get the woman's story so I could hammer her in the press. Or in the press. Do you mean to say that you did indeed witness it firsthand? The grim scene portrayed in this photograph? Oh yes, I saw it with my very own journal eyes. From, the, from start to finish, through the viewfinder of my trusty camera. 
Thank you, many memo. You will now, uh, now give a formal testimony before the court. You will state exactly what it is that you witnessed of the of the events surrounding Miss Brett's death. The beach hut was made of shoddy old reed screens, so there were plenty of gaps I could see inside through. The English woman was sitting on a stool when the student girl came in and started arguing with her. Seconds later, the girl pulled out a knife, throwing the English woman to the fo floor as she stabbed her in the back. My smoldering journal spirit burst into flames. Quick as a flash, I whipped out my camera, ready to click. I pulled apart the rough weave of one of the screens and poked the lens through for the perfect shot. Read screens, you say? Right! You can see them clearly enough in that great shot I snapped. The hut walls were just screens made of coarsely woven reeds. Yes, it allows the breeze to pass through and bring some relief from the summer heat. And it was a breeze for me to poke my camera through and see the whole thing hotting up. Ignoring for the time be uh, being the appalling invasion of privacy involved, did you witness everything that happened from the moment the defendant entered the hut? Oh yes, I saw it. I saw the whole thing from start to finish. And you say that you took the photograph through a gap in one of the screens? Luckily for me, they were pretty shoddily woven. I pulled the reeds apart and thrust the lens of my camera through the gap. Would I get away with it? Or would I be seen? It was the gamble of a lifetime. A, ten a tenacity of purpose that's- Wait, a tenacity of purpose that's considered admirable in a journalist, I suppose. Run a risk one day, run a scoop the next. That's many memoism in a nutshell. At last, it would appear we have a genuine witness to this wicked crime. The evidence and testimony are extremely compelling. I believe we may be close to a verdict. No. Wonderful news, your excellency. Wonderful. Nevertheless, it cannot be denied that this testimony begs one very large question. What question? Exclusive news, a startling photograph, all the makings of an exceptional story for the reporter. Why then was the story never published? Oh, that's right. It seems clear to me that there are circumstances at play here that are yet to be understood. Ha! More pathetic excuses. Very well then, counsel. Proceed with your cross-examination. Yes, your excellency. There's more to this reporter than meets the eye. He's keeping something about this case very close to his chest. I think we're just gonna press everything, unless they're- <laughs> until we get to the end. And they give me a hint as to like, oh, there's something there that doesn't seem quite right or something. You know, you know how they always do. What made you want to see what was happening inside the beach hut in the first place? Call it journal instinct. Can you think of a better reason? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps because as well as being a proven criminal, the person inside was a young woman? Oh, I see where you're going with this. Brace yourselves, people. He's painting the journal. Uh, he's painting the journal as a voyeur. It's hardly slander, sir. You had a camera, and you were taking pictures with the, without the woman's knowledge. Nope, you got it all wrong, little student- Oh, you got it all wrong, little student boy. Sorry? To my mind, all that was inside that hut was a scoop. Nothing more, nothing less. Scoops No, no gender, man or woman. It's all news. That's not even many memoism, it's basic journalism. If only the courtroom was in, was as indiscriminate. Right, so if that's all buttoned up, can we move on? Tell the court then, witness, what sight befell your eyes when you looked inside. A sight that vindicated my journal instinct, that's what. When I pulled back the reeds, I could see it all clear as clear as day. So you actually saw Membami entering the hut? Yep. And she was raging, raging like my journal spirit. And the argument you mentioned, what was that about exactly? You stole it! I didn't steal it! That kind of thing. Talking about the poison, I suppose. The student girl walked right up to the English woman and really started laying into her. 
I mean, if she'd laid in there anymore, there would have been eggs. The man should have been an author. His descriptive talents are wasted on journalism. But the student's rantings fell on deaf ears, like a Japanese person listening to English for the first time. He really ought to work on his similes first, though, to be, to be honest. Anyway, the point is, that woman in the dock was mightily angry. And her temper finally got the better of her, it seems. Dear me. Which was the climactic moment that I caught on film. Oh, also his little armband thing has the- right? Isn't that the, the thing on the pen? So it's his pen! <laughs> Does that mean he did it? Right? Isn't that the symbol on the pen? Because they said it wasn't a school pen, so it's not her pen. Do you swear before this court that you actually saw the precise moment when the stabbing took place? Ha! The precise moment? I didn't see just that. I saw the whole hellish scene play out from start to finish. I have here a simple plan of the beach hut. Perhaps you could use it to explain the court exactly what you witnessed. Right you are. It's all right it's all here in my many memo memo pad. <laughs> when I first peered into the hut, I'm sure that the English woman was on this stool at the back of the hut here. Yes, the accused's own testimony confirmed that. She just sat at the back of the hut, smiling sweetly, is what I have noted down. It's my turn to testify now, try not to interrupt. Then, the next moment as I was watching, the evil student girl entered the hut. After a while, the pair of them ended up in the middle of the hut, arguing furiously. The English one went for the student, but the girl dodged out of the way. And in a flash, plunged the knife into her adversary's back as the two passed each other. Hmm. What you describe as a grim crime indeed. Never sugarcoat the truth. That's what many memoism says. Okay. By the way, many memo. Whilst you were watching that terrible scene unfold before your eyes through the gap in the screen, did it not occur to you to try to prevent the tra tragedy rather than capture it on film? Journos have to be observers. We can't get involved. That's our raison d'etre. So you didn't converse with Miss Brett at all? Obviously not. An observer always remains on the outside looking in. And that's something to be proud of, is it? Your Excellency, if I may. Yes, Professor. I think the witness's last expertly phrased statement should perhaps be added to his formal testimony. What are you... I will grant the defense's request. Many memo, you will supplement your formal testimony with the aforementioned statement. Well, ni nihilism? Is it ni nihilism? Ni nihilism? Nihilism, right? Nihilism is the foundation of many memoism, but I'll gladly prove that my words aren't meaningless. Like, yeah, isn't that what nihilism is? Like, almost like apathy, but not quite apathy. Like, it's very, I, I forgot, but I'm pretty sure nihilism is kind of like you don't really care, but <laughs> something else. I don't know. Okay, I never once set foot. Wait, which, which? He added it to the end, so does that mean I think I, I don't need to, uh... Right, he added it at the end, so I guess this is the only state. Maybe I should, I'll, I'll press this statement. Really? You didn't set foot inside the hut at all? Are you quite sure? I think you may have the wrong impression of me. We're talking about a murder scene here? My nerves were stretched to breaking point already. Oh, I see. You were scared. Maybe I did have the wrong impression of you. Yes. It was all I could do to stifle a scream and hold my hands steady enough to snap the shot. You really should have summoned help before thinking of your camera. 
Many memoism and humanism don't always agree, and most of the time in those instances, many memoism comes out on top. As a sculptor of stories, sometimes I have to be cruel for my art. Yes, that's spot on. Surely he's making all this up. He claims to have spied the whole affair from start to finish. If true, his testimony is devastating. But it does seem as though he's holding something back, doesn't it? If that's how you feel, I suggest you trust your instincts and press him on everything he's said. As you've no doubt seen done many times before in your role as judicial assistant. Yes, I have. I've seen witnesses like this pressed often. I know exactly what to do. So I pressed him- do I have to press him on the other statements too? Well, let me see. This is his pen because this is the this is the emblem he's wearing on his armband. So do we show the pen because we're like this is your pen it's inside isn't it? I should save, shouldn't I? Okay, if this doesn't work. Okay, if this doesn't work, <laughs> I will save. I mean, I say it as if I like if I get a penalty I'm going back, but this is just in case I actually get stuck stuck. Okay, uh... Many memo, until now I've had a firm belief that newspapers are in the business of uncovering and publishing the truth. You're, you're spot on there. The press doesn't lie, which is why I'm proud to wear the emblem of the Shoryu News on my arm. In a way, that's more many memoism. Sadly though, it seems the journalists who write for those papers don't always share the same passion for the truth. What? What are you suggesting with these recrim recriminatory? <laughs> recrim? I didn't even know that was a word. Recriminatory words, counsel. Many memo. Do you recognize this fountain pen? This pen was found at the scene of Miss Brett's death. In fact, the murdered victim was gripping it in her hand as she died. What are you? If you look at the barrel of the pen, you'll notice that its owner's initials are engraved there. R.M. Yes, thank you for bringing that up, counsel. The initials of the accused, Ray Membami. Is, that a co is it a coincidence, I wonder, that your initials are also R.M.? No. <laughs> right pen, many memo, R.M. That's... That's, that's horse dung. Can't you see? One of the central tenets of many memoism is, bring up, is being a pencil user. And yet the court will clearly be able to see on your right hand, there's a very obvious blue ink stain. It would appear that you must have rather carelessly left it somewhere recently. Your favorite fountain pen, that is? Ho horsey horse dung. Many memo, is it not the case that before she died, you met with Giselle Brett in that beach hut? Why should we listen to this absurd nonsense? It's nothing but another excuse. Exactly. Show you news will stand behind me all the way. I deny everything. There must be as many people with initials RM as there are stars in the night sky. The defense has neither the time nor the inclination to count every star in the sky. Hmm? And there's no need anyway, because this pen has more to tell. Yes, there is another clue. A clue that undeniably proves who its owner really is. In that case, counsel, the defense will now show the court where this alleged clue lies. I think it's the emblem. The clue that reveals its owner's identity is this. As well as the initials, there is also an emblem on this fountain pen. An emblem that you will of course recognize, many memo. Oh, uh, goodness me, it's, it's the emblem of the show you news. In other words, the owner of this pen is an employee of the Shoryu News, whose initials are RM. Suddenly the stars in the night sky don't seem so numerous, don't do they? 
Well, Mini Memo, how do you respond? No. Order. Explain yourself, witness. So, this is how the mighty Supreme Court works, is it? Using coercive tactics to, to have well-meaning citizens reveal harmless secrets? I've used nothing but honest tactics. Alright, then fine. I won't try to hide it anymore. Yes, not long before that grim tragedy unfolded. I, a show, show you news reporter on behalf of the public, conducted an interview with the Englishwoman. An interview? You, you never mentioned this before. When exactly was this? As I said, it was before that evil little student girl showed her face in the hut. It couldn't have lasted more than two or three minutes. That's all. It was just a brief exchange. But it came to nothing. And as we me many memoists say, the people don't pay their dues for unworthy news. However insignificant you deem it to be, this court cannot overlook the meeting between yourself and the victim. You will testify now under oath about the precise nature of this meeting and what transpired. Got it. Yes, alright. But... On one condition. Condition? In all good conscience, I couldn't speak out alone about this. You need to call back the earlier witness, Soseki. Soseki? Oh yes, according to my notes here, that man has a secret of his own, and brace yourselves, because it's not a harmless one. It's big. What? What? Many memoism states that one man's secret is every other man's front page story. Very well, I will grant the witness's request in this instance. Officer, summon the earlier witness back to the stand. Soseki is hiding something? Oh, he didn't even say anything. <laughs> he, like, he dragged him here, he didn't even say anything. I asked the English woman for an interview, but she declined, so I left the hut without making a fuss. Then, watching secretly from outside, I saw the woman being stabbed and the other witnesses come running. Come running. The detective realized that the victim still had a pulse, so he ran off to fetch help. That's when this writer man here asked the woman a very significant question. But he didn't say anything about that in his testimony, which is why many memoism demands I reveal it now. You. You mean to say the victim... The victim regained consciousness? Uh, well... And when she did, you, you decided to ask her a question? That's... Uh, true. Yes. He did. He did. And that's not all. The woman gave him a very definite answer. An answer that incriminates the accused. This is preposterous. Why am I only hearing about this now? Why didn't you mention this before, you, you yokel hack? It, 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 it wasn't even a conversation. Yes, I did pose the withering English rose a question. I don't deny it, but she could no longer speak. She was barely conscious even. Counsel for the defense, I expect a thorough cross-examination to be conducted here. This court must, uh, must and will know the truth. Absolutely, Your Excellency. The reporter is claiming that Miss Brett implicated Ray somehow. What on earth could have happened in that hut? So we probably we might have to press the last one because he's not very specific. Let's see. Well, here we'll press this. Do you know what the question he asked? What question? What exactly did he say? Well, now, you should hear that from the horse's mouth, I think. Don't you, Mr. Rider Man? Ah! Out with it, you yokel hack. What did you say to her? What did you say to the dying English woman? 
Well, in truth, I'd been catching crabs at the water's edge and building castles in the sand, you see. Well, the seaside is a place to be at leisure, I suppose, even for a grown man. But then all of a sudden, from that little beach hut, a young girl's panic-stricken cries for help pierced the air. I ran up the beach hut to see what was happening, to find the defendant leaning over the collapsed victim. As soon as Inspector Hosonaga saw Miss Brett on the ground, he sprinted off to get help. And then, just a moment later, I heard a faint moan. A moan from the dead English woman. I nearly jumped out of my skin. Uh, but what did you ask her, Soseki? I asked her, who did this to you? Don't protract this any longer. How did the woman respond? She didn't. She said nothing in response. B but... <laughs> when in the stand, you will answer the questions asked you... Uh, asked of you unambiguously. Now, without evasion or reticence, I demand that you amend your testimony. I will. He didn't even say anything. I asked her if she never replied. So you tried to find out who the culprit was. He who asks a question is a fool for a minute. He who does not remains a fool forever. And having been labeled a criminal twice during my time in Great Britain, I was quick to make up my mind. Better to be a fool for a minute than remain a fool in prison forever. However, you've indicated that the victim failed to respond, is that correct? I know why. I know why the English woman said nothing. She was ignoring me because of my stoop must uh, my stoop and mustache because I'm Japanese. Oh dear. He's really developed a dislike for the English, it seems. Having read the report on his time in Great Britain, I can't say I'm surprised at his at, at his xenophobia. But the English woman didn't ignore you at all, did she, Mr. Writer Man? Hmm. Well, yes, all right. She did respond in a manner, in a matter, in a, in a manner of speaking, I suppose. She just lifted a trembling finger and pointed in the direction of the defendant. Miss Brett pointed a finger at the defendant. Soseki, is that really true? It's not easy to stand here and say this, but when we first entered the beach hut. The English woman was sprawled on the floor before us with the student girl standing on, on the far side of her. And when I asked, who did this to you? The English woman summoned her last ounce of strength to point at a, finger at, a, a, a trembling finger at the back of the hut. Which was, it can't be denied in the direction of the student girl who stands accused today. What? But she was sitting, right? She was, she said, he, she, okay, Ray said that she was sitting in this stool in the back. Right? And then all of a sudden she got- Well, she walked forward a little bit. She got up, walked forward a little bit, but the knife was already there in her, so obviously- She probably got stabbed from the outside, and then got up. Wait, but then how did they switch positions? <laughs> how did they switch positions, though? Because how did she- Yeah, you would think they would be in opposite- was she not- I thought she was- she was facing the other way though, right? She was facing the door. Like, she was- she was laying down facing the door in that picture, like, where she died, right? So how is she pointing the other way? Or how is she facing the other way if she died facing towards the door? <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, I'm just- I'm just confusing it. I'm just confusing myself. So, Siki, why on earth did you neglect to mention this in your original testimony? But, fiddlesticks, I say. This is not a British court of law. You will respond in Japanese. Yes, of course, the English woman did point her finger towards the back of the hut, but, but I was trembling, and she was trembling, and everything was a blur. And thinking about it, I feel as though perhaps she was pointing in a slightly different direction. Actually, no, not slightly, in a very different direction to where the student girl was standing. To somewhere at the back of the hut where nobody was standing at all. 
You mean that your memory of events and the direction in which the victim was pointing are both unclear? Yes, that's it. Unclear. I'm very, very unclear. Your Excellency, surely this proves the matter beyond all reasonable doubt. Yes, the woman may barely have been conscious, and yes, perhaps her finger wavered slightly. But there can be no doubt that this was an attempt by the victim to confirm the identity of her assailant. Why? Because as the court can see, there was no one other than the accused in the direction the victim was pointing. It is now abundantly clear that no one besides the accused could possibly have committed this crime. I am inclined to agree, and in the absence of any credible argument to the contrary, I believe we can now conclude this trial. Oh no. But he could have stabbed her in the back. The headlines writing itself. Dashing lawyer's hopes dashed. 92 point across the whole page. We'll do a a an extra edition. This is a serious blow, Susato. Unless we're able to identify the true culprit and substantiate our claim with evidence, the judge will give his ruling and the trial will be over. Uh, but that's impossible. We don't even know how the crime was committed. Impossible, though the task may seem, we have no choice. We must think back over everything we've learned thus far. Somewhere in all these details, I'm confident we'll find the clue we need. Ray gave us her account of how events unfolded in the defendant's antechamber before the trial resumed. She told us what happened at the precise moment Miss Brett was killed. The English woman was sitting at the back, listening to what I was saying. And then a moment later, she suddenly got to her feet before collapsing on the floor in front of me with a knife in her back. How could Miss Brett have been stabbed in the back in a beach hut that was empty but for, but for herself and Ray? Somewhere amid all this information we've gathered so far, there must be an answer. I take it then that the defense has nothing further to add. So, the gallant yokel student's luck finally runs out. Can't say I'm surprised. In that case, I am ready to deliver my final verdict on this matter. This is a crucial turning point now. If I can't establish what really happened, it's over. Where was the real culprit hiding, and how, or, and how did he or she stab the victim? I mean, we have to say we know, right? Or else we're gonna get that guilty verdict. I'm going, I'm going to say he stabbed her in the back, like, cause, in the back, cause she was still alive for a couple minutes, right? After she got stabbed. Your Excellency, I respectfully ask you to postpone your adjudication for the time being. Oh, to what end, counsel? The defense would like to present the court with an alternative theory. An alternative theory that can explain who the victim was actually trying to implicate with her dying gesture. An alternative theory? Ha, none exists. There was someone else present at the scene who could have committed this crime. What? And the victim, Miss Brett, tried to reveal who it was to those around her at the time by mustering all her remaining strength and pointing a trembling finger in the killer's direction. This, this is fiction. Fantasy. Very well. As you seem so sure of yourself, Counsel, I am prepared to hear your alternative theory. So, young Ryu Taro Naruhodo, yes, Your Excellency, you will present your latest theory to the court by means of this plan. At the moment the victim was stabbed, where exactly are you proposing the culprit was concealed? Okay, I'm gonna save. I'm pretty sure he was here. <laughs> he had to have been here behind her. Right, because she was sitting and then she gets up and she was already stabbed. So she so he had to be somewhere out here. Jin Naruhodo would never give up, and I'm a Naruhodo now. The true culprit who fatally stabbed Miss Brett was concealed in this location. Are you mad, counsel? You're suggesting the culprit was outside the hut? What? Order. Uh, but student, lawyer, Naruhodo, Esquire, that makes no sense at all. You you just pointed out the exact spot where I was hiding to get my, my scoop snap. But I didn't see any suspicious individuals loitering about, I can swear to that. Obviously, if the culprit had been outside, 
There is no way he or she could have stabbed the victim who was inside. Actually, Prosecutor Aochi, there is a way. And, in point of fact, the defense can provide evidence suge uh, strongly suggesting that it is precisely the way Miss Brett was killed. You're bluffing. Y y you're bluffing. The defense's assertion is clearly too fantastical for the court to comprehend. You will need to give us more guidance, counsel. What piece of evidence corroborates your theory that the victim was stabbed outside? Oh, see, there's like a slit in the wall. This one. The original photographic print of the crime scene? Yes, it's clearly visible in this print. The trace of the fatal thrust that was delivered from outside. Do you take us for fools? There's no hint of any such thing. I'm not sure that everyone present would agree. Someone, at least, appears to have noticed what it is that I'm referring to. Counsel, once again, I must call on you to be explicit for the court. Where in this photograph is the trace of the stabbing? It's this thing, this little slit right here. Look closely, just here. In the screen at the back of the hut, you can see the effects of a blade having been forced through the reeds. No, I can't. I can't see any such thing. It's true that the hut in question had four walls as you'd, as you'd expect, however... By parting the reeds, a knife blade could easily penetrate them. This is extraordinary. Yes. The true culprit actually stabbed the victim from outside the beach hut. And of everyone present at the scene, there was only one person who could have done that. Only one person who was directly outside the hut when Miss Brett was killed. Right, ten many memo, it could only have been you. This is this preposterous idea leaves me almost speechless. Just look at the photograph again. The victim lies almost exactly in the center of the beach hut, does she not? Are we to assume, as part of this partial scenario, that the assailant was a knife thrower? No, of course not. We're not. If you recall the testimony of the defendant just uh, of the defendant about the event just before the victim's death. Inside the beach huts, I confronted Miss Brett, but she just sat on the stool. A stool? Have another look at the photograph. The slit in the reed screen. Would align perfectly with the back of a person who was sitting on that stool. My word. So, in fact, the victim was killed while sitting on that stool by a stab wound to her back delivered through the reed screen. Having been attacked, Miss Brett rose to her feet instinctively, but then, unable to speak, she collapsed on the floor in the middle of the hut before the defendant, uh, before the defendant Membami's appalled eyes. And that, your excellency, is the truth of what happened on the beach that day. By your silence, many memo. I take it that you don't deny the charge. This... This is... Absurd! That will do. It would appear that we have a tacit admission of guilt from the witness. Accordingly, this court has successfully established the truth of this matter, which means that the defendant, Membami, is innocent of the crime. Oh, thank goodness. I finally made him cave. I must say, I've never been more proud. No, this can't be. The Auchi clan can't. What am my growth? My growth of hope? It, it wasn't all an apparition. I can't accept this. I see no reason for the continuance, yeah, continuance of this trial. I will therefore move to conclude proceedings by delivering my final verdict.
Well, this is all very convenient. This is how the highest court in our mighty empire delivers justice, is it? Suppressing well-meaning citizens' freedom to speak and branding them as criminals. But... We've established that the victim was stabbed from outside through the reed screen. And no one but you was in place at the time to have, this ha have his hand on the hilt of the blade. It's a perfectly logical deduction. So, your argument hinges on the location of whoever stabbed the Englishwoman, does it? Well, it seems a little irrelevant now. Irrelevant? Where she was stabbed? How she was stabbed? It doesn't matter. I mean, whether she was stabbed at all makes no difference if you think about it. After all, this trial has already shown the whole thing. Shown the whole thing hinges on something else. What? What are you talking about? Brace yourself, little man. I'm talking about the fact that everything's changed because of the dirt you dug up. What? Enough obscurity. Explain yourself, witness. What's to explain? I'm talking about the poison, of course. The poison? Let's ask the professor of, of, for a comment on the situation, shall we? I understand that a deadly poison you were developing has was stolen from your laboratory, correct? And it's been shown that this poison was administered to the victim, Miss Brett. Is, it, is that right? That is correct. The unusual construct constriction of the victim's pupils are a sure sign that this particular poison was used. I see, I see. So, presumably that means that the victim already had the poison in her body before she was stabbed? Oh. Given that her pupils were clearly constricted, it seems highly likely, yes. If she had been dead already, the poison could not have circulated in her blood. Ah, uh, how refreshing to hear the argument of a metropolitan mind. Precisely, it matters not a jot who stabbed whom in whose back and with whose blade. Because, quite simply, the Englishwoman's life was taken not by the knife, but by the poison. But that can be explained by the poison being on the blade, as I already... Forgotten already, have we, Yoko? During these very proceedings, the laboratory of the professor at your side assisted in proving that the blade of the weapon used to attack the victim had no trace of poison on it whatsoever. It must have been the pen! Like, didn't they say it was empty? He could put the poison in the pen! Because it was empty, it didn't have any ink in it. But then how did it get in her? <laughs> oh, I friggin' pressed the button, I'm sorry. Turned out to be a headline-making red herring. Is that about right? Well... Order! But, where does this leave us? How, in that case, did the poison enter the victim's body? There's an undeniably obvious answer to that. The lady most likely imbibed it. You mean she drank it? Have another look at the photograph. Oh, she did. She had a drink of something. A bottle of carb carbonated water. Okay, sure. <laughs> like, you drink carbonated water in a glass like that? Maybe they did back then. I don't know. A bottle of carbonated water in a glass had been knocked onto the sandy floor of the beach hut. The poison could have been slipped into either. So somebody made Miss Brett drink it. Well, what do you know? Look at those dashing eyes. This will make a great front page shot. Hey, why the bewitching stare? After all, I'm the last person you should be looking at. It would make no sense at all that, th that I poisoned the woman, would it? I mean, that's been established already. Established? What are you talking about? Hmm? Don't tell me you've forgotten. That's a little hard to believe, given that person... Uh, that the person who established it was you. Me? What on earth does he mean? Oh, let me capture those wide eyes. This is prime press fodder, this is. It would seem that this trial is not destined to end yet after all. I hereby call upon the witness to give further testimony. That's great, that is. Let me get a shot of that magnificent beard, your excellency. 
You claim it to be impossible that you were the one responsible for administering the poison to the victim. You will explain to the court in your testimony the basis upon which you make such a claim. I'm a journo, and I'm a man. I never try to run or hide from anything in my life. And I'm not about to start now, because that's many memoism. For a brief moment, I thought I'd illuminate, illuminated the truth, but it slipped right back into obscurity again. Just where is this trial going to take us? I'm pretty sure he put it in his pen, because wasn't that like a point when I examined the pen? That it was empty, and so I was like, why the heck is this important? I guess now it's important, because I think he could have hid it in there. Oh yes, I stabbed the English woman, and it's that very fact that proves I'm innocent. Because why would I have bothered to stab the woman if I'd already poisoned her? But why stab her in the first place, though? Like, hello? When I heard the student girl and that pompous English murderer arguing, it got my goat. If the courts weren't going to punish- Oh, I guess this is where he's explaining, like, oh, here I stabbed her, sure. If the courts weren't going to punish Brett for what she did, someone else would have, would have to see justice done. So he's still admitting to stabbing her, like, why the fuck are you stabbing her? Okay, so you admit it then, that everything happened as I described? That you are the one who stabbed Miss Brett in the back through the screen? You can blame this miserable country of ours. A country that bows to the pressure of foreign powers and lets murderers walk free. What kind of future can a country like that have? That's why I did it. I did what, what our pathetic leaders didn't have the guts to do. Slap bang in the middle of that charming lady's back. I plunged the blade of sweet justice right in there. As someone who spends his life seeing that the truth is told, I feel really, really awful about giving false information in my testimony before. But as it turns out, there was somebody else who had it, who had it in for the victim and got, here, and got to her before me. That's right, you guessed it. That pretty little student girl. Now there's the woman after my own heart. You're implicating Ray again. She's the one who gave the poison to the English woman and ended her pitiful existence. And suddenly, snap, this journo here is off the hook. Hmm, the argument is sound, certainly. If the witness had administered the poison himself, he need only have waited for it to take effect. Subsequently, stabbing the victim in the back would have been entirely nonsensical. And therefore, this reporter had nothing to do with the poisoning. Yes, it's all quite logical. Okay, but are we just gonna ignore the fact that he said, yeah, I fucking stabbed her? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I guess maybe, maybe, like, what was it supposed to be? Like, oh, yeah, I stabbed her after the fact that she died just to, like, stick it to the man? Like, <laughs> this still, does that not sound wrong, too? That's right, it is. Logical and true. I'm glad you've all seen the light. Justice at last. This is unbelievable, and after I'd made so much progress in proving his guilt, is he going to get away with it now? Think of Kazuma and Naruhoto. They never stopped looking for a way to forward until the judge's final gavel. Very well then, counsel. Proceed with what is assumed I- with what I assume to be your final cross-examination. Oh, thank God. Yes, Your Excellency.